Hit it. Hit it. Welcome to Beginner Basics, how to join with a slip stitch. So we've learned how to make a slip stitch in order to create a chain stitch in the previous Beginner uh, Basics class, but what about joining with a slip stitch? When the instructions tell you it's time to join in the round to, uh, with a slip stitch, or join a color with a slip stitch, or join to XYZ with a slip stitch, whatever it may be, just how do you do that? Well, I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. If we look down here, I have went ahead, I've completed a little sample I chained 13, I worked a double crochet in the fourth chain from hook and all the way across, and I've put a marker in the top V of the double crochet, the very first one I completed. What's different about this than the other videos, as you've noticed, is I've completed all the double crochets and I've went ahead and I finished off my round, or my, my row. Um, I cut my yarn, I always leave at least four to six inches of yarn length, and I've completed it. The reason I've done that is I wanted to be able to say, okay, what if I wanna change colors and I wanna do it and I wanna join up here? Or, for example, what if this was the end of my ball and I needed to new, add a new ball of yarn? This is how you're gonna do it. First off, you always wanna add a new ball of yarn at the edges of your project. You never wanna do it right in the middle because after you weave in your ends, if by chance they accidentally come unwoven, then you have this unsightly hole right in the middle of your project. So you're better off joining your, your new ball of yarn or your new color at the very end. We're gonna add a new color because then it's easier for you guys to see exactly what I'm doing. So I'm gonna join this pink to my already established teal yarn. It's convenient that I have this stitch down here marked because that, I know that's exactly where I'm going to want to mark or create my slip stitch. I'm going to take my hook and I'm going to put my hook directly through both of those V's. Now you can join in the front post or the um, back loop or the front loop or through the V's like you normally would. It's up to you, but uh, just decide what, it, what you want to do or however it's written in the pattern and do that. I'm going to put my hook in. I'm going to yarn over my hook and pull up a loop split my yarn a little bit, that's right. So now I just have this loop. You'll see that my tail is just hanging out here and my, my working yarn is hanging out, so I have this loop. I'm gonna yarn over my hook and I'm gonna pull that yarn over directly through the loop that was on my hook, sort of like a chain. But now if I pull my tail, I've snugged it up directly right onto there. So now I've joined my yarn with a slip stitch and I would carry on as if this was the, the rest of my row or the rest of my project. So let's assume that I wanted to do a chained Let's do a chain two, because we're not gonna count it as a, an actual stitch, and let's do double or half double crochets. So I'm gonna yarn over my hook. For this, because I'm not counting my chains as a stitch, I'm gonna go in, yarn over, pull up a loop, and complete my half double crochet. And you'll see, now it just looks like as if this were the end of the row. I have to have my chains and my half double crochet, and I would carry on just like I normally would down the row. So that's how you could do it if you wanted to change colors mid-row or do stripes. Like you can absolutely change colors or add yarn, your new ball of yarn that way, just by adding that little slip stitch and then carry on as if it was the chain two and turn or turn and chain two or whatever the, the chain amount is. I'm gonna set this aside because I'm gonna show you something a little bit more. I'm gonna pull this down. This is one I have already created, just a little swatch sample, and they're double crochets and I've worked through the back loop only for these rows. If you need a refresher on back loop only, please check out the Beginner Basics Crochet for back loop only. I've worked the row completely this way and then I did not turn. I finished off, I came back down here, joined with a slip stitch, and then I chained three and I'm counting that as a stitch. So I marked it and I double crocheted all the way down. Finished off and I did not turn. I joined my yarn, chained three, and work double crochets all the way down. What's cool about this is I get this little textured rib here because I've left my front post is, post, post is, ha <laughs> ha. I've left my front post live, but I've only been working my back post. I have a nice clean edge over here. I have these tails that if I wanted to have them act as fringe, I could just leave them, or I could weave them in through the color sections as I have them. But one thing I wanna point out is since I have these nice front post sections, I could actually go back and work a stitch into those. So I have created a couple of patterns where I have worked um, a, a section, like just if it was a very long row, maybe everything was like you would do normal double crochets, but maybe this section of 10 you only did back 
back loop uh, double crochets. And the reason I would do that in a pattern is because I want these loops free so I could go in and join yarn. So I have gone into whatever stitch you, your pattern would indicate, yarn over my hook, pull up a loop, yarn over my hook, and draw through just like I did before. I'm going to pull my tail. And then here, I could complete an entirely different section. Okay, so I could chain, say I chain two, and then I come over to the next one, the next free loop. Can you see the next free loop? Let's say I go in it and I work into it. It helps sometimes if you fold it in half. See how I have those loops free now? How cool is that? So I could work stitches going along all this free loop. Can you see how that works? So right now I'm just doing single crochets all along my free loops here. And all I did was join with a slip stitch into these free loops and now I have a whole different texture. So if I wanted to, I could continue on with this and you know chain one and single crochet back and forth as much as I want and see how I would get like this pocket? I, I mean once it's created long and I would tack it down, I could tack it down and I'd create a little pocket right there. So there's lots of uses for um, these front loops free or the back loops free. As long as you know how to join with a slip stitch, you could carry on and create just about anything. So you have so many tools in your crocheter's toolbox right now, and I'm so happy that now you have one more to add on there. Please come back and check out the other videos for Beginner Basics Crochet to add even more to your toolbox. Don't forget to hit subscribe so that you are up to date whenever there's a new video released.